Morning all. Not our scaffolding today. We are in Bangor, North Wales. And check me out with a shirt on. Must be something good. So today I am at the Building Lambs Forum conference, which is kind of the best and only uh, lamb conference in the UK. Probably, I would say, one of the best in Europe and once a year meet up three-day conference all we talk about is lime we have lectures today site visits this afternoon and then with more lectures tomorrow more site visits on saturday round historic structures we're going to conway castle Carnarvon castle uh, balmorris castle so all the historic sites cadu's involved with this it's a kind of a big thing that happens in the uk in the lime industry so super excited been doing this for 12 years now something like that and it is like brilliant networking's fantastic and today hence why i'm dressed like this I'm doing a talk on hydraulic lime so we'll get inside and we'll put the presentation on and you can watch it i wanted to address uh hydraulic lime it's been Oh, it's had a bad press, I feel, for the last maybe five, six, seven years with the evolution or the rebirth of hot mixed mortars now coming back into place. And I don't think personally it is as bad as what it's been made out to be. And we've been doing some field tests and some research trying to understand is it fundamentally flawed from the baseline that we haven't got the first procedures right and everything following that has had a detrimental effect to using hydraulic lime. Um, so what we wanted to do was make some hydraulic lime samples up. We did this, everything that we've done is with a St. Astia NHL 3.5. I didn't want to have a massive range of hydraulic limes to work with so i know there's going to be different variants between the different lime manufacturers but all this has been done with an nhl we batched our mortars with a nostafield aggregate and they were mixed at uh, two and a half parts to uh, aggregate in a barren force axon mixer mixer and we've kept these inside in our workshop we haven't had maximum airflow for it, but we do have the workshop doors open, so they have been able to dry out over time. So yeah, the issues we've got are with um, workability is one of the key factors. Um, and everybody says that the hydraulic limes are a, are a dead mortar compared to a, a hot mix mortar, which is absolutely correct. You mix a hydraulic lime mortar and it doesn't have the same body as a hot mix mortar. We've got continual set over maybe um, six months, a year, two years, five years. This has been researched through the bath study that the BLF did, and it was proven that this was happening. We've got another issue with remixing. If we remix a mortar after two, three, four hours, we are actually losing a, a immense proportion of the hydraulic set out of that hydraulic lime. Moisture movement, David's done a lot on this through the porosity of hydraulic lime. It is not where it should be in the scales and is the past research that we've been doing correct? So what we've done is we got a control which was shap lime. It's the closest that we had. I don't have a St. Astia granulated lime. And what we wanted to do was see what the slow slaking particles are left after we've mixed this for around 20 minutes. So we got 500 milliliters of lime and weighed it at uh, three, uh, 430 grams. We slaked that in water and you can see we tipped off. We, wa we weren't interested in, in the slate aspect of this. We wanted to know what was left over. We drained it, put another five liters of water with it, left it to stand, drained it. We repeated that process to around about the 20 minute mark, which is a industry standard of mixing hydraulic lime. 
and then we weighed that off. I advise don't use the kitchen utensils for doing that because you get an even bigger reaction than you do with um, slake and lime. But you can see there, after 20 minutes of mixing, we have actually got 28% of that, had, of that lamb, uh, the sharp lamb left that has unslaked. It is just particles. I'm thinking fast, uh, overburnt, underburnt, and then slow slaking hydraulic particles as well. And then we repeated this process in the beaker, wet it back up again, tipped it off. We're down at 20%, 18%, 16%. At four days, we're now left at 14%. And we could not get that to dissolve anymore. I think if you could leave it maybe a month, two months, three months, you would start to dissolve more of that in particles, but it would be a finite amount. And the when you're mixing it, you are just getting grains. There is no milkiness consistency to this coming back off. It is just small grains that come off. So I'm believing that at four days, you're not gonna get, you have got 14% of your binder that is now aggregate. It is never going to slake. Industry, we've got St. Astia there. Mix for five minutes. St. Astia again. Even St. Astia themselves are saying we can work it up to 24 hours after we've mixed it. Uh, we've got Round Tower there, which uh, five minutes and then continually another 20 minutes after that. We have this industry standard from manufacturers, which, is around about 15 to 20 minutes of mixing. Um, and this is throughout all manufacturers. So what we did, we ended up doing these samples. Uh, sample number one is mixing within 20 minutes and setting in this uh, block that we've done. And then we've got 12 hours, 24 hours, and then we've got further blocks. And we don't have any fancy testing equipment for strength. So what we did is we cut these samples up into 50 millimeters by 50 millimeter squares. And then we put a plate on top of them. And we crushed them on some weighing scales. And we have got the results. Uh, the, I think from the 12, or what I'm assuming from the 12 to 24 hours, we've got a higher strength of set. And I'm believing that this is because we have dissolved more of the calcium aluminates and uh, silicas in the mix because we've left them to soak for 24 hours and that has distributed them more. I think the 20 minute one, if we continued that, we, that would have continual set um, going on far past what uh, we've got there. And taken from Chris, when we went to Norway, I decided that we would put them in jars. We left these to stiffen for six hours. We did try from doing them straight away, but they just dissolved. But you can see the 12 and 24 hours kept their rigidity over time. And the others tended to break down. We did try to crush these, but we couldn't get that to work to bring a conclusive result the 20 minute one uh, did get more residual strength, um, but I'm feeling that the two day, three day and four day, um, we have lost the aluminate set because we have knocked that back out um, once we've been remixing two and three days on from then. But the, the uh, 20 minute one, we have a high calcium aluminate set in there. And then we started to look at carbonation. Was there any difference in carbonation? It was uh, the 20 minute one. We have got air light set in there, which again was proved in the bath study that we do have air light set in there. The 12 and 24 hour, we have got a denser material. So we're gonna have a slightly slower carbonation in there. And the others then we have got faster carbonation. I believe this is because we have got a more open porosity and we were dampening these every five days. So we were feeding these with water. Um, so yeah, and then we looked at evaporation of the water. We put them in the beakers and we were looking at how quick the water evaporated from. The 100 day test, we still got the 20 minute, the 12 and the 24 hours that have still got water in the beaker. 
a lot higher on the 20 minute mix and I think that is because we've got more hydraulic set and we've got the air lights in there which are preventing that evaporation of the water in the beaker and this is one kind of I wanted to show a visual of what I would have expect uh, NHL line would be under a microscope with AI coming out of it and this is this is the best way I could picture it and so you know we've got marshmallows Maltesers nerds in there you know 20 minutes in a mixer they're going to break down there's going to be nothing left of them maybe you know after 20 minutes going up to an hour your jelly babies have gone your fruit pastels have gone your polos are going but then you've got the sherbet lemons and the mint humbugs and they're not going anywhere in an hour you're looking again 12 24 hours to, to break this down and this is a kind of I think everybody expects a lime binder is just going to uh, break down in that 20 minutes and I think it's wrong to expect that it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen so then we start looking at industry research 459 and we know we have got 8 to 20 percent um, clays and silicas in the hydraulic lime so we know we've got these impurities in there and the burning process so some unreacted silicas and clay and we've proven that with the beaker washing out the fast laking particles earlier and we've proven that that is correct uh, CL90 I think it's uh, lower on a, on a sharp we know that we've got them clays in there that don't dissolve which is 14 percent at four days but what I'm interested in is the limited vitrification during the NHL firing with the silicas and the luminates and there was I, I must have been eight years ago there was a, a manufacturer called Lime Tech who um, I think he, I met him at the BLF a few times I think it was called Gary if anyone's got his number uh, please pass it on he, I was talking to Gary and I've spoken to him a few times um, in the past and what Lime Tech managed to do was deglaze the silicate and aluminates of this partial vitrification and managed to have uh, an NHL act like a uh, calcium oxide and again we've got a mainly B light set in hydraulic lime we have got a calcium aluminate set but that is only a partial amount of it and the B light is the slow set it, uh, the slow setting uh, particles and the calcium luminates is the fast setting particles but the predominant uh, hydraulic factor is the B light and this is the documents then that we uh, have been meeting to get all that information from so there has been a lot of research on that and I think it is uh, to my knowledge very accurate so if we start looking workability 10% increase from slow slaking particles left we, we have proven that with the shap line so if we leave the binder if we leave the mix to slake uh, to slake down for 24 hours we've instantly got 10% more binder in there we have managed to get some of the slow slaking hydraulic particles to break down we've managed to get some of the overburnt and underburnt particles to break down and then we're looking at mix ratios why are we mixing at 2.5 percent it is um where, where's this come from we're asking an nhl to behave like a hot mix motor but we're not mixing it at the same proportions we've got expansion of hot mix motors which happen on site during the mixing process but nhl expansion happens in the factory when when they slake it so we haven't got that added into the equation when we're mixing these mortars on site and should we be mixing NHL mortars at a one and a half to one or even a one to one and the 20 minute mixing should we be doing these at 12 and 24 hours I believe that the 20 minute mixing came from the cement industry continual setting from the bath study 
leave the motor to leave the motor, uh, leave the motor stand for 24 hours. We'll break down the air light set. We know we have got air light set in the motors, which is a fast acting set. So if we remix that in 24 hours, we're going to break that air light set down and cancel that out of the motor. Some of the fast setting calcium illuminates will also be broken down. And we've got slow slaking uh, calcium illuminates which are victified, which has been proven that they, some of them will be broken down as well. We've got a greater matrix for the calcium luminates and calcium silicates to dissipate into, which will then weaken their act on the mortar. So we've got less hydraulic properties in there. And here we are on a graph showing the 24 hours, how much set are we losing out of that? I'm believing we're losing 10 to 15% of the actual set of the hydraulic line, but we are grabbing massive benefits from slaking, the slow slaking particles that aren't dissolving within the 20 minutes. Thank you, David, for the graph. Um, again, fantastic research that David's been doing on this. All our NHLs are on the right side of that line, but we're asking this of a motor that we're mixing at two and a half to one that hasn't been mixed properly. What happens if we mix that at one to one, leave it for 24 hours? Are we getting a denser matrix and better porosity from the motor? Past research that has been happening, David Young, probably one of the best ones, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, remix 10 minutes. David Young again over there. A lot of the research that I found was all 10 to 20 minutes of mixing. And I think that this is fundamentally flawed a lot of the NHL research in the past. Workability, yes, we can improve that. The correct ratios, expansion and slaking time. If we have a longer slaking time, we have the right ratios. We have got a much better, more workable mortar. Con continual set, the baseline, of the bath study, I'm afraid, I believe is flawed because the mixing time is wrong. I think we would have had different results if that was 12 and 24 hour mixing. Do we knock the set out of our hydraulic lime from leaving it for 24 hours? Proven, no we don't. We lose some of set, 10 to 15%, but we increase slow slaking particles distributed throughout the mortar, which is a massive plus. Movement of moisture, as one, if we have got a denser material with more particle dissipation, we are going to be down in that range of maximum breathability. And is the research correct? I would argue not. The baseline is wrong. We have got the fundamentals of mixing lime incorrect. And this question has never been answered and never been researched. How do we hydrate a partially hydrated lime? And that is one of the questions that need answer answering. And when we start mixing NHLs in a hybrid form with calcium oxide to make hybrid mixes, we get some really good results. But that's for another day. Thank you. Thank you.